Hey, what's up, shitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Sonata Viper Plus. Now, this is an upgraded version of the Sonata Viper, which is a full suspension fat tire e-bike made by the nice folks over at Sonata. Currently, this bike is listed at $16.99, but check their website frequently because the price changes on a regular basis, and no matter what, you can use coupon code SHOOTTHECHIT to save yourself $70 off your order. But anyways, guys, we're going to get this thing unboxed. I'm going to show you what they've upgraded from the last model, as well as go over all the specs and features, all that and more. And all you got to do is smash that like button. Anyways, guys, come on, let's get started. Time to get this thing unboxed. Reviewed quite a few of these e-bikes now, and I found the best way for me, at least, I just cut the front of the box open, open the top. Look at that, guys. You have access to your brand new e-bike. Now the fun part, cutting all the zip ties. You can already tell the seat looks pretty comfortable. Check that out. We're almost there guys. Getting a nice view of this red and black paint job. This bike comes in two colors, the red and black and there's a green and black. I have now reviewed a couple of these Sonata bikes and one thing that sticks out with is the uh, fit and finish. They always have really nice paint jobs. So I thought this was just a styrofoam block, but this is definitely the battery in here. So guys, don't throw this away. There it is, guys, the battery. I need you to try some so I know you're not a cop. So what comes in the accessories box here? We got the pedals. These are pretty nice looking standard black pedals or metal. This is the charger. Now this is a two amp charger. Ideally, I'd, like, I'd see, like to see at least a three amp charger because it's a 20 amp hour battery. Two amp charger, meaning this can take 10 hours from dead to full to recharge the bike. Additional zip ties always come in handy. A nice little box wrench here, 13, 15 millimeter and a multi-tool. Ooh, a nice matching helmet branded with Sonata. That's actually a pretty nice looking helmet here. Look, there's an, even an LED light on it. That's cool. A set of bar end mirrors here so you can see who's behind you. You may notice this bike already has a stem on it. So we're not going to be using this one. We're going to be using the nice adjustable one here. Almost done. A couple more zip ties left. So it can be a bit awkward at this point. It comes with this nice little fork spacer in there. So what this does is it protects the fork from getting bent if it gets hit during shipping. The tab on that washer lines up to the bottom of the dropout and you have your brake rotor going through your pistons on the brakes. Okay, we're gonna put on our new adjustable stem here. Allen bolt out of the top here to remove the stem cap. So just take off the old stem, say goodbye. All right guys, little change of plan here. The adjustable stem is shorter than the stock stem. So we actually have to cut the steering tube down a little bit. Now you can either get a spacer which like you see on the, on the bike, there's already spacers on here. You can order yourself another, one other spacer or you can cut down the stem. And since I actually have the tool to cut the stem, that's what I'm gonna do here. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you could take it to a bike shop or order yourself a spacer. So here goes nothing. Now that we remove that part of the stem, it's time to put on the new handlebar riser steering tube is just below the uh, top of your handlebar stem don't you don't want it too tight we just want it tight enough to put some uh this just preloads the bearings here in your headset so you don't want to have it too tight tighten up your handlebar stem bolts on the side and these are what actually keep it locked onto the, the steering tube want to change the angle of your handlebars loosen this bolt here and you can change the whole angle of your handlebar stem as so. Time to put the pedals on our fancy smancy new crank arms here. And keep in mind guys, the pedals are directional. And you see here it says right. This one says left. This is the right pedal here. And you always screw in the pedals going towards the front of the bicycle. This side is correct. Righty tighty lefty loosey. The other one is lefty tighty righty loosey. Go ahead and drop our seat in here. Ooh. All right, we're almost done. It's time to put on this headlight. 
plug in the electrical connector here. All right, the fully assembled Sonata Viper Plus. This is a pretty nice looking bike. I do like this uh, bright red and black contrast with each other, but this is definitely a unique looking bike. So here we have the 1000 watt rear hub motor. I don't see a brand on this. I know on the Sonata Sabre, it's a Sonata branded motor, but nevertheless, here's the numbers on the motor if you're interested. 52 tooth front chain ring and these nice stout looking crank arms. I really do like these crank arms. This is a 48 volt, 25 amp controller. And that equals out to be about 1200 watts. But what sets this one apart is this is a torque sensor bike. Torque sensor bike, the way they work is the harder you push on the pedals, the more power it's going to give you in return. A cadence sensor bike will just give you a predetermined amount of power as soon as it senses the pedals are moving. With torque sensors, if you're lightly pressing on the pedals, it's going to give you a small amount of power. If you're pressing on the pedals harder, it's going to give you more power. Some people really like the torque sensors and some people don't. It's, to me, it's a more natural feeling ride and you get more exercise when you ride with a torque sensor. So I do like torque sensors and uh, I'll definitely give you some feedback on how this torque sensor is when we go take it for a ride. 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery. The previous generation of this bike had a 17 and a half amp hour battery. So this is a nice upgrade. And battery is also IPX6 waterproof rated. Normally I'm quite skeptical of range numbers on these bikes, but with torque sensors, as I just explained, it gives you power based on how hard you're pedaling. So these are actually quite a bit more efficient than a cadence sensor bike. So I wouldn't actually doubt that 70 miles is achievable on this if you're using a, if you're not using the throttle a bunch. Seven speed Shimano tourney derailleur. And it's, here you go, here's your seven gears in the rear. You can see here, it's got a rear, this is a full suspension bike. So here's your rear GSX 200 shock. As of now, I've never tested this shock before. First time seeing it, and I can tell you here, it's not adjustable. But you can hear, see your rear suspension linkage. It looks nice and uh, nice and stout. You got your bold red wheels here. These are 26 by four inch fat tires, and these are Chow Yang branded tires. And you have your plastic front and rear fenders. Now guys, I actually really prefer plastic fenders because they're quieter. So if rocks hit them, it doesn't make a bunch of noise. Metal fenders make a lot of noise. Front fork here, open or lock setting, two adjustments. And you have your preload on the left. Here's your front headlight. And on the other side, we have our 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear. Now I would have liked to see these be 180 millimeters, but they are hydraulic. The last generation had mechanical disc brakes. So this is a step up in the never seen this brand before but they look like they're built pretty nice and the handles feel pretty nice there's your nice comfy seat here one thing i did notice is the seat if you put it down low enough looks like it will make contact with the rack in the rear this is a pretty standard rear rack i wanted to put a whole bunch of weight on here but if you want to put uh, bags or anything on the back you have the option to do so right there your standard kickstand let's bring you over here to the cockpit so to turn on the bike you're going to press the power button here on the bottom and that brings on this nice new color display. The previous model had a black and white display. So this is a nice and bright, nice looking display if I do say so myself. So it gives you your standard controls here. You have your pedal assist settings here and you press up or down to toggle through and there's five levels of pedal assist. We'll go over that more when we ride. Now to turn on the headlight, you press the headlight button right here and it has this nice horn. Ooh, this is one of the louder horns I've ever experienced. It has your Shimano seven speed shifter half twist throttle nice palm grips here give you a nice ergonomic and your dy island hydraulic disc brake handles let me tell you these brake handles feel pretty nice this display gives you the pretty basic information you have your speedometer pedal assist level tripometer if you tap the top button here on the side it'll toggle through so you have tripometer odometer max speed and average speed pretty basic display but i like it so far it looks really nice so overall the Sonata Viper Plus is a really nice looking bike. This bike is at 77 pounds and it's rated for a maximum weight of 330 pound rider. Sonata states that this bike will fit a rider from five foot seven to six foot six. This is what a six foot two rider looks like on the Sonata Viper Plus. You know, now we've gone over all the boring specs and features. What do you say we go do the fun part and take this bad boy for a ride? Well, there's one thing we got to do first. Let's put on our matching helmet and go take it for a ride. Come on guys, let's get going. All right, guys, we are out on the Sonata Viper Plus. 
And uh, let's go over the pedal assist settings real fast. So pedal assist one. Yeah, it's definitely different than a cadence sensor. I can feel as I push harder on the pedals, it gives me more assist, but still pedal assist one is not the most powerful. And it looks like it's just, you know, with the torque sensor, it'll just keep giving you power as long as you're pedaling. It's just not gonna give you as much power. So as we go up in the pedal assist levels, we're just gonna feel like our legs are significantly stronger, if that makes any sense. So as you're pedaling, you're just gonna get going faster and faster. So I do notice a little bit on pedal assist five that you feel the power, like when you give it a little bit of pedal, it gives you a little bit of assistance, but as soon as you like give it a, a strong pedal stroke, it gives you a lot of power back. So it's definitely uh, noticeable. And the throttle is definitely, is correspondent to what pedal assist level you're in. So in pedal assist one, the throttle, it's barely doing anything. Pedal assist two, it's gonna get you faster. So your throttle, your throttle power is gonna vary depending on what pedal assist level you're in. I have noticed now, I've been betting in the brakes and uh, they're just now starting to feel powerful. So when you first get these bikes, guys, uh, be prepared to you, you know, your first few miles, your brakes are gonna feel like they're not working at all. It's because you need to bed them in and then you'll feel them. The strength of your brakes will get significantly stronger. These rubber grips feel nice and supportive. I have to say, I'm not a fan of the rear view mirrors. I know they're very functional and a lot of people like them. I see lots of pictures of people riding their bikes and they always have these mirrors on them. I'm not a fan. It's just, uh, I like having everything at the minimum. I wanted to show you guys that it does come with mirrors and what it looks like on the bike. But for me personally, I'm not a fan of the mirrors. I just get myself a nice network, neck workout by turning my head back to see if there's anyone behind me. I know it's early in the ride, but I can definitely tell this is a full suspension bike. Between that 26 by four inch tire in the rear and that rear shock, it's taking the, uh, the edge off of some of these bumps. And so the torque sensor is gonna give you a more natural feeling ride. Natural meaning it's gonna feel more similar to a regular non-electric bike. So it's a dependent, you're gonna get more of a workout on a torque sensor bike, which uh, you know some people view it as a negative. I personally like that you have to give the bike input. But guys, if you want, you can still use just the throttles. I'm used to reviewing a lot of big, heavy, fat tire e-bikes. These Sonata bikes in general feel lighter than uh, a lot of the competition. This is a 77 pound bike, and while that uh, does not sound light, in the world of e-bikes, 77 pounds is relatively light and pretty maneuverable as well. This scenario right here could be where a torque sensor would be more practical than a cadence sensor because when I'm coming up those steps with those sharp turns at slow speeds with a cadence sensor, it'll kind of just give you power and jerk your bike forward. Whereas this one's a much more subtle, easier to modulate how much power you're getting. It's easier to navigate around tighter corners with a torque sensor. With a torque sensor, I would definitely feel more comfortable recommending a torque sensor bike to say like my dad or somebody that uh, hasn't been on e-bikes before because I think they're gonna have an easier time adjusting to a torque sensor than a cadence sensor, especially with a higher powered bike. You know, a bike like this, 1000 watt motor, 1200 watts peak, it's a fairly powerful bike. So if you get on a bike like this with a cadence sensor and you're not expecting it, you have a pedal assist five, you could, uh, you could uh, get into yourself in some uneasy situations. I've seen it happen personally myself. So I do think this torque sensor is gonna be easier for people to adapt to that are perhaps new to electric bikes. But let's you give this a true agility test here and tear out the planks of doom. I haven't been out here for a while, so I don't know what condition the planks of doom are in. It's always part of the fun of coming out here. You never know what you're gonna get. Ooh. So far, so good. This is where having a nice maneuverable bike with predictable power delivery is nice. Wow, it's completely overgrown.
Sonata Viper Plus had no problem with the Planks of Doom. So here's what a six foot two rider looks like on the Sonata Viper Plus. As you can see, this is a full suspension bike, but as you can also tell, there's not a whole lot of travel on here, but it's enough to do moderate off-roading and you know fire roads and such like that. Here's what we look like riding around on the Sonata Viper Plus. With our matching helmet, I might add. We look like a couple of sharp looking fellas, aren't don't we? They're gonna know you're a dangerous man when you're out there riding your Viper. This bike has more traditional mountain bike uh, geometry as well, where you're more over the front handlebars, more of a traditional mountain bike feel. But I have to tell you, between this full suspension and these Chaoyang 4 inch, 26 by 4 inch fat tires, it gives a pretty smooth ride. It's eating up terrain like this, no problem at all. Torque sensor gives you a nice smooth ride. This is a nice cruiser bike. You know, I don't want to keep going on and on and on about torque sensors, but so I feel like uh, not many of these bikes on the market have torque sensors, so I want to go over thoroughly what they offer and differ from cadence sensors. And another thing is, a torque sensor bike is going to get significantly better range than a corresponding cadence sensor bike because the way it modulates the power, instead of just giving you a set amount of power, you know, it inevitably leading to uh, kind of not the most efficient. So torque sensor bikes are much more efficient. And being that this has a 20 amp hour battery, you could be in for some pretty long rides. Another thing I'm noticing, it uh, seems to be a trend with Sonata bikes in general. These bikes are extremely quiet. This bike's making next to no noise riding around. This is a class three e-bike, so it should do 28 miles an hour top speed and should do 20 on the throttle alone. So I'm in PAS5, we're on throttle. That gets us up to 20. Oh, it's still going. 24, 25, 26, 27. Wow, it looks like we got all the way up to 28 miles an hour on throttle alone. And we're cruising along no problem with the pedal assist as well. So yeah, it's a pretty quick bike. Traditional class three e-bike, but a lot of them will cut off the throttle at 20 miles an hour. Well, this one looks like it'll take you all the way up to 28. The bike feels nice and steady at speed nice and sturdy. This bike does feel significantly lighter than what I'm used to. I do like this display. It's nice and easy to read. Basic information is all at your uh, fingertips. So yeah, this way. I've seen this bike. I've seen this display on a couple of bikes and I'm a fan. It's a nice display. I always prefer it when these uh, bikes are set up to show you voltage so you know exactly where your battery's at. And I like it when they have a watt meter so you can show how much power they're outputting. I do notice if you want to go faster, you have to give it a little more input than perhaps you're used to doing with an e-bike. You know, I'm used to riding uh, cadence sensor bikes and you can be really lazy on those if you want to, because as long as you're moving that crank set forward, it'll just propel you forward. With this, it's forcing me to do some exercise, guys. So yes, you do have to give it a little bit of input to make it go faster. It's not gonna just do it for you unless you use the throttle. Yeah, so this is a nice cruising bike, nice and smooth. You're gonna get some exercise riding this bike, whether you like it or not. Feels like it handles well, and I do notice the seat is pretty comfortable. I've uh, ridden a lot of these e-bikes. Some of these bikes come with seats that are uh, almost torture devices. This one's pretty nice and cushy. I think I would leave this on here. I wouldn't bother changing it. I'm in pedal assist five, using my legs, and we're getting up the hill, though. It's doing it. It's half the fun of riding bikes, guys. It's finding these little shortcuts to take everywhere. We're cruising right along right now, 17 miles an hour. Suspension's doing its job, eating up all these bumps. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. The thing I'm noticing too is this bike is quiet, meaning uh, there's no rattles or creaks or rattles on it. It uh, feels like it's put together well. Plastic fenders aren't making a bunch of noise. So you ride a trail like this with some bumps in it, some bikes I ride will make a lot of noise. And the only thing I'm hearing from this is a very slight hum of the motor. But overall, like I said earlier, this is a very quiet motor as well. Just listen for any noises the bike makes. The only thing you can really hear is the uh, fenders. All right, it's time to do a brake test now. I'm gonna get up to about 20 and then we'll do a panic stop here.
Well, these do have hydraulic disc brakes and they seem to work decently and they don't make any noise. However, they're not the strongest brakes I felt. And I think that's partly due to this having 160 millimeter rotors. I wish this had 180 millimeter, but overall the operation is quiet. They just don't have the most grab, but they seem to work well. Noticing the handles here, the DY Island handles have adjustable knobs on here so you can adjust the throw of the brake handle, meaning how fast, how far out it'll engage. You can have it engage here, you can have it engage closer in, depending on your preference. Another thing I noticed too, is I'm finding myself in a much lower gear on this bike than I traditionally ride around on in other bikes. I don't know if that's something I would change over time, but just an observation I wanted to throw out there. A lot of time, uh, people on e-bikes, they end up just staying in the maximum gear the whole time. All right guys, time for the hill test portion of the test. This is a really steep uh, hill. I happen, I don't know what uh, grade it is because I'm not a dork. But let's see how this uh, Sonata Viper Plus with torque sensor does up it. It's already in the lowest gear and a pedal assist five. Oh yeah, I'm having to put some input in so far, but it doesn't feel like the motor's struggling. More like I'm struggling. But yeah, we're still doing it, but uh, guys, it's a workout. Okay, we're still going. I can hear it chugging along. Come around the home stretch here. I'm still giving it a significant amount of effort with my legs, but in the synergy with the motor, we're getting it done, fellas. Whew. So that was a bit of a workout, but we got it done. We got to the top, literally and figuratively. Can't always trust these uh, battery gauges, but I'm showing we're 8.1 miles into the ride. Still showing five bars. I would guess that this thing would easily make a range of 45 miles no matter how you ride it as long as you're not using the throttle the whole time you know one of the side effects of having a bike this quiet is that uh people don't hear you come up on them so you can let them know with the horn but this horn's a little on the loud side so yeah we'll be prepared that you're gonna need to alert people of your presence with a nice uh, full suspension bike you can take any path you want well if there's not people walking on them Something I wanted to point out is on the harder, some of the harder drops, I'm noticing that the back tire is rubbing this controller box here and you can see a little bit where it's making contact. But keep in mind guys, if you're on a heavier side of rider, you might have problems with your rear tire touching the, the plastic on the controller box. However, I don't think that's gonna cause any real damage other than the plastic because the actual meaningful components are underneath that plastic. So, but I still wanted to point that out. Well, well, there you guys have it. This is Sonata Viper Plus. Overall, it's a pretty nice bike. There's some things I do like about it. The red and black paint job is a very striking looking bike. You're definitely gonna stick out with this. This is a torque sensor equipped bike. This may not be the option everyone wants, but I, in my opinion, a torque sensor bike's gonna be great for somebody who's wanting to get back into biking. They wanna get into shape. They wanna lose some weight. This bike's gonna be a great option for you. Some things I'm not too fond of with this bike. The suspension doesn't offer a ton of travel and the rear can be kind of stiff. And the brakes, although they're hydraulic and they're nice and quiet, they're still only 160 millimeter rotors and they don't offer you a ton of grip. But if you're interested in purchasing a Sonata Viper Plus, you can go link, use the link in the description of this video. MSRP is $16.99, however, I've never seen this bike listed for that. It's always been $14.99. Uh, if you use coupon code shoot the chit, you can save yourself $70 off that purchase price. And uh, anyways, guys, I hope you liked the video. As always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.